All right, this one's going to go to the Twitch chat. I want to see who here can answer this question. If, and if you legitimately know it, that's perfectly fine. But I'm curious to know if anybody, if I were to tell you an artist just became the most Grammy name, Grammy nominated artist in history, who would it be? And Tyler, you already saw the story, so you don't get to guess. Aw. That would be cheating. Fine. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's true. That's why I got to shut it down early. Just going to pause here for a moment, see if anybody even has a remote guess here. Ramirez is asking to say it again. So there's an artist. Here's the, the headline. Blank becomes most Grammy-nominated artist in history. Obviously, the blank is this person's name. Why would you say Leonardo DiCaprio? Was Grammy not... Did I not say Grammy? Ramirez is right. Coming in hot, Jay-Z. He has become the most Grammy-nominated artist in history. And it says here, this came through on Tuesday as Jay-Z became the most uh, Grammy-nominated artist in the awards history with his three 2022 noms, pushing him to 83. He had previously been tied with legendary producer and composer Quincy Jones at 80. Jay-Z's last album release was back in 2017. It was nominated for guest appearances with Kanye West and the late DMX. He currently has 23 total wins. Paul McCartney previously tied for second with Beyonce. And he's gained a couple of nods. And he now passes her and Jones for sole possession of second. So Paul McCartney coming in at 81 Grammy nominations. Looks like Jay-Z was first Grammy nominated back in 1999 where he had three nominations, two of them for his classic Volume 2 Hard Knock Life. Oh, that's such a good album. Oh. And he was also nominated for the uh, du uh, uh, duet. I guess the song that he did with Jermaine Dupri, Money Ain't a Thing. Man, I listened to, I listened to that album nonstop back then. Jay-Z turns 52 next month. Eighty-three Grammy nominations. God, think about that. The first of Paul McCartney's 18 total wins. So he has 18 total Grammys. That was all the way back in 1964 when he won two of them as a member of the Beatles. They won Best New Artist as well as Most Overrated Artist. No, I'm kidding. Uh, they also won one for uh, Hard Day's Night as well. So Jay-Z, King of the Grammys. Really quick story here in a really lengthy article on Keanu Reeves. I just wanted to make the comment that uh, he's making it known that he wouldn't mind being in the MCU. And by lengthy article, it's not actually all that lengthy. For an article, it is. Which Keanu Reeves article were you looking at? Because the one I'm looking at has four paragraphs. Uh, try scrolling down. Nope. No. Was it the one that I sent you from Esquire? Because most of the article is a video. I mean, I can read the whole article here. Check this out. If you haven't heard the great Keanu Reeves, star of the Matrix trilogy and John Wick films, and dozens of other films you love, most likely is on the cover of Esquire's Winter Issue. To celebrate this great occasion, aside from, you know, the story, Reeves sat down with an all-timer of an episode of Explain This. Oh, you know what? I'm getting that confused with this Star Wars story. There you go. That was a long story. All right. One of the stories you sent me today is long. That's all I know. <laughs> he goes into talking about uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And Keanu Reeves is quoted as saying, isn't it bigger than a universe? It's almost like a multiverse. It's a Marvelverse. It would be an honor. 
There's some really amazing directors and visionaries, and they're doing something no one's ever really done. It's special in that sense in terms of the scale, the ambition, the production. So it'd be cool to be a part of that. I think it'd be cool to bring them in. I'm just saying. And if you have... That will be a conversation for another time. <laughs> that's another discussion. Question. Yeah, that's a, that'll that'll be one where we can try to figure out exactly. Because I think there were people who were mentioning that like they wanted him to play Adam Warlock for some reason. What? I mean, were you going to bleach his hair blonde? I don't know. I I, I might be remembering that wrong. I just know that there was. Um... Well, you know, what? let's do it. Let's dive in. Who should Keanu Reeves play in the MCU? Yeah, there was an article, and this one actually just comes from a day ago, where it mentions he's down to join the MCU, and some fans are already locking him in in, in specific roles. It doesn't have any of the roles listed in this article, though. Although it does mention that he has been rumored for roles like Silver Surfer, Moon Knight, and Mr. Sinister. Of course, we do know that Moon Knight is uh, Oscar Isaac. So that one ain't happening. And it's still interesting that, like, the whole Blade thing has kind of been swept under the rug. All, I, I believe that's being teased a lot more with Mahershala Ali playing Blade. All right, we're running out of time on the news here, so we got to power through this stuff. So anyway, so streaming platforms, they got some Black Friday deals coming up. If you're looking to get Hulu, Peacock, Paramount Plus, Discovery Plus, they do have some deals popping up. One of which is Hulu for 99 cents a month. That's a $6 discount per month or $72 per year. Mother Russia, how are you doing today in the Twitch chat? Says, what's up, bro? Big fan of the morning from the morning show. Kind of sad. It took me so long to realize you haven't been on there in a while. Glad to see you on Twitch, though. Well, thank you for joining me over here, and thank you for commenting over on the uh, in the Twitch chat. Got a lot of really fun things lined up here. Dostavanya, friend. Um, what are some of these other deals here? And talk about Disney Plus in here. Essentially, what's going on with a lot of these streaming services is that they're not getting any new um, subscriptions. Do you share your subscriptions, Tyler? It's okay. You can admit it. I don't. See, I never really did until like somebody hooked me up with their Discovery Plus. i got to get the 90 Day Fiance, right? Looks like here it says NBC Universal used uh, the Today Show to launch a Black Friday deal for its streaming service Peacock, offering 50% off Peacock Premium for six months. It's normally $4.99 a month. I do have the Peacock, but I don't pay for it. I mean, that's how I watch the Dan Patrick Show. Uh, looks like Viacom, uh, CBS's flagship streaming service Paramount Plus. Meanwhile, they're offering one month of its premium plan for free. Damn, that one's $9.99 a month. And they're highlighting access to live NFL games, Star Trek Discovery, and things like that to try to bring people in. Stars is offering six months for 20 bucks. It's normally $43.99. Discovery is offering Discovery Plus for $0.99 cents per month for three months. It's normally $4.99. And AMC is offering AMC Plus for $1.99 per month for a year. It's normally $8.99. See, I was wondering when this was going to happen. Is that all of these streaming services, they range anywhere from what, like five bucks to ten bucks to fifteen bucks per month. And when were they gonna start to realize, hey, um, there's so many streaming services? We need to figure out where the actual price range is gonna be, because as they keep increasing the price, people are gonna start dropping out. People aren't gonna be able to afford that stuff. And you have God. Just dozens of streaming services out there now at this point. 
And there's always that one show, man. There's always that one show for the streaming service that you got to have. So for myself, Netflix, it was Stranger Things. I'm still waiting for that thing to come out. Disney Plus, uh, I mean, that's that was one where it's not just one specific thing. But I think for a lot of people, it was The Mandalorian. Um, for myself, Discovery Plus, we needed 90 Day Fiance. Um, Hulu is kind of where I watch network TV shows. Like, that's where I'd watch, my, like, my Brooklyn Nine-Nine and things like that. But they also have a lot of really good um, original content on there. Um, Amazon Prime, I really got that because I like two, uh, free two-day shipping. But The Boys is amazing. What streaming services am I forgetting, Tyler? Oh, my gosh. I should just come up with a list. Um, well, there's The Peacock. Which I have, and I, I get that for the Dan Patrick show, but there's commercials and stuff, and I don't pay for it, so that's not the end of the world. Uh, Roku, I think that one you get for free with certain TVs. Um, oh, snap. I ended up paying for uh, Showtime because I got hooked on Billions. Yeah, HBO Max. HBO Max, yeah, that's another one Ramirez just brought up in the Twitch chat. And that's yeah. one, since I switched my services over, I'm either going to have to just buck up and, and pay for HBO Max or just not do it. Stars as well. I can't think of a show for stars, though. HBO Max, see, I, again, I don't think there's a specific show. They got a really good, a lot of the really good DC animated titles, though. I was actually in the middle of watching Batman The Long Halloween. Because the rumors that we've been hearing is the new Batman show with Robert Pattinson. That one actually has uh, kind of a... Similar feel, kind of taken from the Long Halloween series. Mother Russia asks, do you think the Obi-Wan series will be only Disney Plus? Yeah, that's why they do it. It's basically to, to force you to purchase Disney Plus. So there's some uh, streaming deals for you. Now, I also wanted to get to this because with Hawkeye now being released... The Nerdist put together every Marvel announcement from Disney Plus Day. The first announcement, or the first like big announcement, was X-Men 97. A new original series. It's coming sometime in 2023 with a perfect snapshot of Wolverine. You all know the meme where he's in the bed and he's looking at the picture. And then somebody just you know puts a different picture in the frame there. Did you watch that? When it was going on back in the uh, early 90s, Tyler, X-Men? Yeah, I did. Where uh, Wolverine had the yellow jumpsuit. Yep. Remember the theme song? Yes, I do. Can you sing it? Did they have lyrics? I don't think I had lyrics. No, you're just like you're just supposed to be able to like like hum it. You want me to hum the theme song to X-Men? Everybody knows the X-Men theme song. <laughs> I should have turned off the music while I did that. So now, can you recreate that, Tyler? Can I recreate that? I turned off the music. It's here. I'll do it again for you. And I turned off the music specifically. So here's the X Men theme song. Now it's your turn. <laughs> you are a very special person, Brandon, but I think we're running out of time. We need to go to the next story. <laughs> oh, so that, yeah, so we got 2023. That's coming out. X Men 97. I'm looking forward to that. They announced that Ms. Marvel is going to be coming our way, coming here uh, summer of 2022. Twitchy Twist says, I don't even know the theme song. Who doesn't know that theme song? Captain Hammer wrote doo 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 all over the place just to match what I was doing there. They also, uh, on Disney Plus Day, they also came up with kind of like a whole lot of coming soon things that weren't necessarily um, anything date specific or even time specific. But they put there with uh, coming soon, they've got She-Hulk, I Am Groot, 
Agatha. I thought it was Agatha House of Harkness. Yeah, it is. There's a typo in this here. So you got I am Groot, little baby Groot there. I think my sister will be happy with that one. Yeah, see, Captain Hammer's right, dude. We should ban anybody who didn't know the... And I know Twitchy Twist, you're like the most loyal of loyal uh, followers followers here. But man, if you don't know the X-Men theme song, that's 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 Ban Hammer. They also announced that uh, Secret Invasion and Ironheart are all shows that are going to be coming out here soon. Added to the coming soon mix, you have Marvel Zombies, Spider-Man Freshman Year. It's an animated series. What If Season 2, Moon Knight, and Echo. So these are all Marvel things that you can get excited about, man. Twelve new series for Marvel coming out on Disney+. Plus. And also, just in case anybody didn't know, since we're running out of time, I'm just going to post this article. This comes from the Nerdist. I'm going to put this in the Twitch chat. And again, if anybody wants to check this stuff out, if you're listening to the podcast or a clip of this and you're like, well, where do I find that, that, that clip or where do I find that link? Come on over here to Twitch at The Real Brandalorian. And I'll, I'll probably get into this a little bit later, but this came from Nerdist. And it said, what we learned touring Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Do you know what the Galactic Star Cruiser is, Tyler? When you say what the Galactic Star Cruiser is, you mean like the cruise boat or what it would be in Star Wars? Like in reality what it is. Oh, it's like a cruise ship that they... Basically, they're doing a bunch of play acting on it. It seems really cool. It's like they got dinner theater, role playing. That's a two-day cruise. Well, it's not an actual cruise boat. Oh, it's not? It's the, mean, it's the hotel. Oh, man. I did not read that article closely enough because it really made it seem like they were going on an actual cruise. Um, no, it is. Uh, and this is something that they've had in the works for a while. Oh, and you can already book it. Oh. Ah, oh. wow! It says here fans are not impressed by first look at Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. So it's located in Orlando, and it's the reason it's called a Star Cruiser is that when you go in, the whole thing is designed to make you feel like you're in an actual Star Cruiser flying through space. And some of the rumors that I had heard was that they were going to make it so that if you wanted to leave the Star Cruiser and head on over to, um, like, Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios, it's a fully immersive experience. It's, it's a, it's a two-day stay where it's a completely immersive experience in kind of a Star Wars world where you're staying in a room that's completely, you know, Star Wars-based. I keep bumping the goddamn bell. But yeah, that's something we're going to get into more kind of down on the road. But it says here really quickly from the Nerdist, it says, Part live action role play, part video game, part immersive theater, and part luxury service experience, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser incorporates uh, a multitude of facets. In the early days of figuring out the experience, an operations partner suggested treating it as a cruise-style outing with a fixed itinerary. Like, you could even go to... Uh, you know, all the different areas of the ship and everything. And it's pricey, man. It is pricey. So if you're going to go to this thing, make sure you save up. But we'll get into that more because we got to get through all this stuff here. It seems like one of those murder mystery dinners, except for two days. Yeah, kind of. Dude, how cool would that be if they did an actual murder mystery dinner based in the Star Wars universe on the Star Cruiser? Tyler, you, you, you hit a gold mine there, my friend. It's meta in the meta. It is. Uh, final news story here, for uh, at least the entertainment wide. The bowling alley that was the inspiration for the Big Lebowski is now up for sale. Cove Bowling Lanes, which has been for sale for several years, will be offered at a foreclosure auction coming up on December 15th. The property is still open, according to the website. The auction is going to begin at 11 a.m. at the site at Stockbridge Road. 
and the property is currently being offered at four and a half million dollars. No, actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. It was offered at four and a half million dollars back in 2011. Most recently in 2018, that was down to four million dollars. Were you a big Lebowski fan? Of course. I mean, really, who wasn't, right? Yeah, I mean, how can you not be? I mean, that rug really tied the room together. Am I right? It was a really nice rug. It was a nice rug. I mean, it was a really nice rug, man. And you're out of your element, Donnie. <laughs> I am the walrus. Would you shut up? The world does not stop and start at your convenience, you miserable piece of shit. 